Can you all hear me? Yes. Okay, I'm a trained performer, so hopefully that helps. Okay, so good evening and welcome to this select committee of environment and climate change. Uh, what we are going to do is, uh, whilst we are hoping to fix these microphones, uh, first of all, can I advise that no apologies for absence have been received? Do members have any apologies to report? Yes? That would work in a minute, go for it, isn't it? Councillor Media has been taken ill today, so Councillor Media might have been coming up. Thank you. Anyone else? No? Okay, thank you. Uh, could we take a minute so that we all introduce ourselves around the table so that members of public know who we are and what our roles are? So I will start with myself. My name is Councillor Lena Simic and I'm an Anfield board member, Labour Party member, um, and I'm the chair of this uh, select committee. I'm Mike Jones, Deputy Manager of Democratic Government Services and Clark of this committee. I'm Liam Robinson, I'm Councillor for Kensington and Fairfield, and I hold the Transport and Air Quality Portfolio. Clark was saying before, and obviously we do try to keep 
catering is for a minimum to I'd say resources. Um, everything else is available online, but as I say, I, I bring this report to the committee um, tonight, so online afterwards, apart the minutes. Um, so yes, it's been um, quite a, a long and difficult few days, to say not, um, not very encouraging in terms of environmentalism or progressive politics generally, and I know several people in this room will be reading in a similar way to the way that I am. Um, so, obviously we've had the um, UN conference going on in Madrid, which probably would have got a lot more publicity normally if we weren't having a general election in the UK at the same time. Um, and the bad news from the UK general election obviously managed to drown out the bad news from Madrid. Um, so I know that that's been described in Madrid that is, as a missed opportunity today. Um, and a lot of decisions have maybe not been taken in a way that I expect people in this room wish they had been. Um, and similarly, um, general election results, um, okay, I have campaigned very long and very hard myself against leaving the European Union. I don't see anything positive in any way about Brexit and I certainly don't see in terms of its impact on environmentalism uh, and, and regulation to protect the environment that, that anything positive is going to come out of this. But you never know, uh, that lovely Mr Johnson may surprise us all uh, and that lovely Mr Gove and all their colleagues. So, we wait with bated breath to see what comes forward nationally. Meanwhile, obviously we've declared a climate emergency locally and we have to carry on doing our best locally um, to deal with um, the things that we face here. Um, part of the global fight as well as uh, the local one. So at the last meeting I submitted a fairly lengthy report that's in the minutes or pages of that. And this is a fairly brief update on some of those issues. Um, it's not an exhaustive list of everything I've done as a cabinet member, uh, and it's not an exhaustive list of council's work on sustainability. We don't need to publish any of this to say I haven't done it. And just because it's not in here doesn't mean I haven't done it, but I've tried to draw attention to some of the things that were sort of pertinent updates on and things that I thought would be interesting to members. Okay. So the work on the four work streams continues. They were set out in the motion that went to the committee in July. We've now got member chairs of those committees, as I understand it, as well as officer groups set up to support that work. So that's very positive and that work continues. And there's an item on this uh, agenda after my report, but people can update on those specifically. So I'll just draw attention to the things that I personally prioritised as my three main priorities when I was first appointed. So number one of those was the air quality and transport um, work. <coughs> we had a lengthy report on that um, at the last meeting because we just at that time submitted the, um, the draft. The draft outline business case to DEFRA at that point. Um, and we continue to work with DEFRA, uh, waiting for kind of their responses and so on to know how to progress that. But we continue to work with both the CNA and particularly with Sefton Council as well. Uh, I've been to meetings with Sefton offices, our members, and cabinet members there, um, because obviously what we don't want to end up with is a situation where Sefton have a clean air zone and then you've got a little space and then we have another clean air zone and you kind of end up with different people paying kind of different things. So we need to make sure at city region level um, that that is pulled together. Um, there is a very active city region um, air quality task force that's uh, well embedded in all local authorities. Councillor Robinson leads on that, I'm sure that he mentioned some of that work today, and express my thanks to him for the sterling way that he's, he's led on that work. So, really pushing the city region forward on that. Um, so, at the last committee, I emphasised the need to approve all forms of public transport and support active travel. Um, we've had some progress with the bus gate uh, on Manor Street and Hanover Streets. I understand there's a report due at the Regeneration Committee later this week. I'll have to update on that. That will mean that we can keep bus routes on the uh, Renshaw Street, Hanover Street route as um, we, we were hoping to do. So hopefully uh, that's going to work out. Again, I'm sure Councillor Robinson has plenty of information on that. Um, at Cabinet, a week or so ago, I've lost track of time, I apologise, we did have a lengthy report on the Festival Garden site. Got a hard copy of that and if anyone needs to look at it, it's my copy. It's on green paper but it's not exempted, copy them on the paper. Um, but that's uh, quite interesting in 
terms of the transport water arrangements and so on around the vegetable garden site development. I've also done a particular amount of work on our walking to school project. Uh, that's something that I've led on as cabinet member and it's something that I've already been pushing on as a ordinary councillor when we took something to a regeneration committee last year. But as cabinet member I've pulled together a cross party portfolio to work on that. Um, not cross party, I apologize, cross portfolio. Um, with four, four different cabinet members and the importance of mentioning those four cabinet members although that seems quite a small issue as in getting people to walk to school it is a particularly wicked issue in that it, it's something that's getting worse not just here but nationally with less people walking to school more and more people complaining about parking issues and so on at school meanwhile there's more and more air pollution and less and less you know, children have a healthy option of walking um, so let's say it involves across four portfolios with three of my cabinet colleagues uh, we've got quite a lot of resource going in uh, from some externally funded projects and we're trying to work to, with those projects to pull that information together to try and get some really good examples of what works in terms of and what schools want and what schools can support us with because obviously we are short of resources as a local authority uh, and the election of a Tory government obviously isn't sending out really positive signals on helping with that. Um, so we will be sending out a questionnaire to all the schools in Liverpool next term um, that's kind of ready to go fairly soon, but obviously we won't extend it till after Christmas now. Uh, asking, as I say, schools what they want to see in particular and how we can help them. Uh, that will include things like potentially looking at closing roads for 20, 30 minutes in the morning and the afternoon. Nothing's off the table in that sense, but it will require schools to input, to provide their governors or staff or parents to help resource some of that stuff. There's not a council resource that can just resort, um, support that in a blanket way. Uh, but it will include things like training people, can enforcement powers potentially, um, if, if schools are willing to participate in that. So that should hopefully move on that on that project fairly soon and have some pilots in process by uh, after the half term of February, um, so that we have something there. And I've also been talking with Sefton Council about that, and hopefully we can push something through at the city region level. As I say, it's not a Liverpool problem; that is a, a much more general and indeed a national problem. Um, the second priority that I particularly um, stated when I first got appointed was around the natural environment. Um, so it, it, we've got the wildflower projects going on across the city. In particular now we're looking at training up our own staff on how to take those, looking after the wildflower patches that we have created, but also of course in increasing those. I personally would love to see at least one wildflower patch in every ward. Um, as a minimum. Some of those have already been paid for with Section 106, but in no way do people have to wait for Section 106. Um, in Greenbank, Councillor Brown and I um, actually used our MNF to have a wildflower project. So, you know, every, every councillor has, has the option of doing that. Um, but we do need to get the capacity for delivering it up, increase um, a little bit of a bottleneck in terms of the results for the advice and the support in doing it at the moment. So that's why we need to get all our own staff trained to support the, um, the project people who are running that. Um, trees obviously are massively important. Lots of people were involved in the big climate fight back um, a couple of weeks ago um, with various projects going on around the city. There's also a Friends of the Earth letter going around about doubling tree cover, which we would support in principle, but I'm not 100 percent sure how many trees exactly we've got in terms of doubling them. Um, but of course, again, that doesn't mean that anyone has to wait for a council strategy on tree planting. Um, if you have your own land, of course, some people may do, they can uh, get on with planting trees. But we will, are doing our best and I'll bring a report in the new year specifically on the citywide tree planting program. I've written about the Pocket Parks Plus program. Um, some good news there. Apologise for all the acronyms in, in the report. Sorry about that. I was trying to save paper. The Ministry of Housing, Communities and Local Government um, has given us funding for Pocket Parks. There's five listed there that are already in process. There's another three we hope to be coming through. Um, people now are extremely keen to use any kind of vacant lands and green spaces to make the absolute most of those, whether there is meanwhile uses for growing or um, actually as, as, you know, bringing them back into permanent use. It's very important that everyone has access to green space in our city. My third priority that I spoke about um, is on waste reduction. <coughs> So I didn't, I'd spoken at the last meeting about the importance of in, not just enabling recycling, um, I think that's a bit passe to be honest, we've got to really look much more fundamentally about preventing waste. 
uh, and reusing and composting as much as possible. I also said that the Gold Star is awarded. I think Councillor Dunn got the Gold Star, so that's maybe a good work with the allotments. Well done. Councillor Prince has got the yellow Gold Star this week. I don't know if he's done anything yet, but I know that he's been looking into selling compost bins, um, which again is a really kind of low cost intervention that you can do in your own wards at ward level using my own neighbourhood fund. And everybody can do that. You don't have to wait for me to do it. Um, Draw your attention here to the citywide alleyway improvement project. Um, particular thanks to the street scene staff and the recycling scene for all their work on that. Um, and also just uh, can I mention also that I want to thank the parks team as well, so I've got to do that under the natural environment that they're uh, particularly Christina Williams, it's that can be minuted, they're extremely under-resourced but work such a, such a hard and constructive way to bring in external funding and so on. I've mentioned here the staff green champions, so there's a city-wide, council-wide, sorry, network of staff champions which mean frankly with uh, clean in, in charge of them, I mean, as in coordinating them. Um, so that's about getting the actual council, its internal processes, um, using people's good ideas and things throughout the council, all the different departments, embedding sustainability. I think we've got someone here today, brilliant. Um, and we, um, we've also had some prizes that will be given out. I don't think they've been told who's won yet, though, because that's still a secret, I think. I think it's still a secret. <coughs> I'd have to shoot you if I told you one of the prizes for the green, the green ideas. Um, so basically, yeah, we've declared a climate emergency and there's things that we can all do. There's lots of things that we're up against. It's a, a tough world that we're working in. And uh, thanks to everyone who's been helping, and that's my report. Uh, thank you, Laura. Uh, now there's an opportunity for some questions. So if you would like to ask questions, please, Council Com. Absolutely. Thank you for reminding me. Uh, Councillor Chris Brown. 
Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you for the report, uh, Laura. Um, I wonder whether it might be useful for this committee at some point to have a report back from our cycling champion, uh, particularly in relation to things like water scores and stuff like that. I think that might be useful for us to, to have that as part of this committee. Um, I appreciate this question. Uh, you might uh, not know the specifics, but um, I'd ask maybe to investigate the Allen Priory site. Uh, my understanding is that the council is uh, paying for remediation of the land due to environmental impact from the developer. Uh, is that not something that can not be? Uh, uh, is that something that we can build developers for rather than simply uh, just coming out to councils uh, and similarly in other developments? I honestly don't know about that project and I don't know about that, but I agree with you that I am very strongly of the opinion you know, that polluters pay for that, you know, landlords pay for all the damage they do, and so developers in the same way. Um, so I don't know, I don't know if anyone is here that can answer that, but we need to ask the members of the regeneration on that specifically. Um, but I completely agree with the principle of what you're saying, I don't know what's happening or why. Was the possibility of doing that? <coughs> uh, actually, there's some reason we can't do it. Okay, well, what I said is that 
literally to the school gate, which is just outrageous in the same way people now park on the main on Smith down over. So it's just people's attitude is a disgrace. Uh, and I don't know why public behaviour has deteriorated to that effect. But um, it has done for sure. Um, I totally agree with you about the enforcement, but there is a schedule of enforcement, so if they're not at your school, they probably are somewhere. Obviously, that's a limited resource, but I don't, uh, there's also a limit that there has to be a certain amount of time if someone's part for before they're legally allowed to actually take them. Um, but I certainly agree that we, we need more enforcement. But I, I'm trying to get people to not drive near the school at all. That's the more fundamental issue, isn't it? Because you say air quality, but also other things, aspects of children's health and, and well-being, uh, that it's a good thing to do. Children should be going to schools near them and should be able to walk there, or at least to park some way off and then do the last bit walking so that you're not getting that congestion and that air quality issue. But it's not just air quality, there are more general health issues, but air quality comes into it. So thank you for being helpful, but yes, um, I'd love more enforcement. I'd love everyone to be jailed who parks on their jail lines. Thank you, uh, Laura. Could we please um, uh, move a thank you to Laura for this update? And is that agreed? Yes. Okay, thank you. So we are moving on. As you know, uh, when we declared climate emergency, which was declared cross-party, it was a cross-party motion, and we set up four task groups. And these task groups are built and natural environment, transport and air quality, waste resources and energy, and low carbon economy. Each one of these task groups is chaired by a different uh, political party chairperson. So that is important, that there is an understanding that we all collectively, as all four parties that are here, have to work towards um, uh, towards a, a better environment and uh, mitigating climate change, climate emergency in Liverpool and of course beyond. Uh, so what we are going to, and also it's important to know that uh, there is also specific council officers who are working also alongside these four task groups. So that there is also officers committed to the same task. I'm saying these things also for the members of public so that you are aware of how this is all functioning. I'm sorry for the members, this might be old news, but just that we know how the structure is. Uh, so uh, now I would like to ask uh, each chair of each one of these um, task groups for a bit of an update um, as to what, where they have been. So with the first one, Built a Natural Environment, we have Councillor Alison Clark, who's been uh, uh, chair for this. So Alison, please. Okay, so as chair, uh, I'm a member of relevant um, council officers, including um, Chris Walsh, divisional manager for governance, orders and insurance, and Sam Campbell, head of plan who's here with us tonight, and Sam, you, you may want to uh, chip in. Um, so at this meeting, it was agreed that Sam um, would pull together various policies and procedures already in existence within the city council pertaining to the built and natural environment. Um, this will enable the task group to know where we currently are and to determine our aims and objectives going forward. Um, Sam's also uh, engaged in a scoping exercise looking at what other local authorities are doing in, in relation to the climate emergency. Uh, so for example, Bristol have been uh, very proactive and at the forefront um, in the recent past looking at the climate emergency and seeing what uh, authorities like Bristol are doing in relation to our task is likely to be very helpful. Um, the plan is to meet in the new year when this information is available and the members of this task group as things stand are Councillor Tricia O'Brien, Councillor Maria Tula and Councillor Joanne Kushner. Thank you, Alison. Can I also ask, because at our first meeting which we held here, we had a number of motions that were passed to these task groups, so that we make sure that these motions that have been passed to different task groups are addressed. I think, for me as the chair of this committee, that's quite important. So, someone don't really want to comment on that, because I know some motions were passed where they Yeah, they were, we're, we're working through those now, we're going to be bringing them back to the scrutiny panel that we're working with Council for Clark in the new year, so we'll be working those 
to bring them back to the committee. Okay. Thank you, thank you for that, because I think that's one of the things that, that we know that, you know, they just don't uh, disappear somewhere. Okay, so um, let's move on now and talk about a different task group, which is um, transport and air quality. And may I please ask Councillor Lawrence Brown to give a, a report on that. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, um, I've had a meeting with um, Assistant Director Colleen Martin um, today um, regarding the, um, the task group and how it should be set up and what the um, discussion should be about. Um, currently, there's an officer task group um, sort of separately from the, the members, which is really, um, which is talking about a lot of the, the, the different issues which will be raised uh, under the umbrella of the, the, uh, the members' task group. Um, so things like working with DEFRA on the pollution levels currently uh, in Liverpool um, and also on the schools, uh, which was mentioned before, the public health side um, and electric charging points and so forth as well. Um, and uh, Pauline might want to uh, jump in on some of this later after, uh, after I finish. Um, we're also working with uh, Mersey Travel and Mersey Rail on looking at um, what the uh, public transport systems can do to assist the uh, gear quality um, business problems that we've got. Um, and also, um, we're working with highways on reconfiguration of junctions and so forth and roads in the city to, to try and improve air quality. Um, so, these are all possibilities, these are all ongoing works that the officers are engaged in, some things that we can look at uh, as members. Um, there's uh, proposed to be an extra five uh, major air uh, pollution stations uh, implemented. I think this was mentioned at the last committee meeting um, in, in the city. So um, the locations of those haven't been decided yet, but hopefully the um, task group can have an impact on that and where they go. Um, looking at the uh, baseline data for pollution levels and how that might uh, inform future um, uh, aspects of the committee's work, basically, or the task, task group's work, I should say. Um, we also looked at the cruise liner terminal briefly, and these are all very brief, by the way, we didn't have uh, much, much time on the meeting, but um, um, again, we'll be exploring that in greater depth in the future, and obviously, we've got a motion coming up which you can look at in a few moments' time. Um, the uh, clean air plan, um, just various issues under that. But uh, we were discussing. Uh, also, we can um, link in with Diana O'Brien and some of the work that he's doing with the cycling. I know that was mentioned by um, uh, one of the members here today as well, uh, looking at cycling and walking. I'm particularly keen to look at sustainable methods of transport um, and travel in the city. Um, so, in the new year, we'll be meeting for the first time. Uh, I don't know the members of the committee, uh, sorry, of the task group yet. Um, but I know one invitation has gone out, and I think another one is following shortly. Uh, obviously, it's been a busy, busy time, and that was just recently. Um, and um, I think one key aspect is to look at the additional impact that the uh, committee, uh, sorry, the task group and its members can, um, can, can sort of uh, achieve on clean air and you know, the, um, the, the air quality in the city. You know, um, I'm asking you as well to uh, forward the, any documents which are interesting, strategies and plans and so forth, which are currently um, being put together by the council so that we can you know, examine those. Thank you very much, Councillor Brown. And uh, Colleen Martin, would you like to add something? Um, no, that's a very effective summary. Um, but as Councillor Brown said, we're expecting the task group to meet prior to the next meeting of, of this committee. Thank you, and the same, obviously, with all those motions that we put towards that task group. It's important that we address those. We are going to move on to waste, resources, and energy. Waste, resources, and energy. And we have Councillor Chris Brown to report on that. Thank you, Chair. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank Chris uh, Lowe, Assistant Director for Environment, for, uh, along with Peter Bay and Democratic Services, for um, getting together with myself and putting together uh, a bit of a uh, terms of reference and work program. I appreciate 
uh, given the time and the fact that I was standing for election. Uh, <laughs> I only had a short period uh, to meet, um, but we managed to get through uh, a bit. Uh, so, uh, the key tasks of the scrutiny panel um, will look at how we reduce carbon emissions associated with waste uh, resources and energy. Uh, and the panel will hold meetings, particularly theme meetings, particularly around each area, so around you know, one month we'll do waste, and one we'll do particularly around resources, and one around energy. And we'll look to receive evidence from various partners. Um, you know, I'm very keen on getting key stakeholders involved in this, people like the local NAPI Library, for example, most of waste authority, during actually during a general election campaign, I met with uh, the chair of the uh, Northwest National Farmers Union, who's doing a lot of stuff around food waste. Um, uh, with uh, Manchester uh, Council. Uh, you know, we'll gather examples of best practice locally, uh, nationally as well, including procurement, waste and prevention, reuse, recycling, energy saving, uh, and other green uh, generation. Uh, and we'll review policy uh, locally and nationally <coughs> and external funding opportunities that we can, that we can tap into uh, as a local authority. Um, we're going to focus on the progress to date in terms of what the council is already doing in terms of reduce, uh, reducing carbon emissions. Uh, I think it's important as well that we have an understanding in terms of what the local party is already doing. And I think you know, it would be useful for a full members to kind of, you know, if, we could, if this task group can increase the cost of communication of what the local is already doing, then I think that's a good starting uh, 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 block, really. Um, in terms of the membership, uh, currently uh, it's myself and Councillor David Cummings. I've got um, two uh, uh, vacancies currently for the committee. I'd be really keen, and I had actually uh, emailed Mayor Anderson about this, I'd be very keen on actually having at least one councillor from the north of the city uh, on this committee uh, because I think it's, I think it, um, I don't want it to just be, frankly, you know, I represent Walton, you know, we've got some of the highest uh, recycling rates from that part of the city, but actually there are more than five parts of the city. So, yeah, absolutely. No, absolutely. Um, but I think it's important if we're declaring... Yeah, but we still Yeah. Um, but I think, you know, if, if, we're, if we're looking for a city-wide strategy, I think I don't want it to just be from one part of the city. I think we want to try and get a, you know, a broad, broad uh, aspect across the city, really. So if any members... Uh, are interested in joining us, um, please do. In terms of the terms of reference, um, we've used uh, the uh, Friends of the Earth uh, produced a kind of 50 point plan really for local authorities that um, uh, declared a climate emergency. And so Chris has taken out a number of points uh, from that document and we'll be using that to formulate our kind of plan for um, the year. And we're also focusing around the UN uh, Sustainable Development Goals. There's uh, three or four in there actually. Uh, shape what we're doing as a as a committee. Um, we'll meet in the new year uh, and we'll have a report for the first time when we meet us as a committee in February. In regards to the motion, by the way, uh, we had a lot of motions to do this uh, from this committee to that work program. I don't want to just do those motions in the first meeting. I appreciate that members might be waiting a while um, for a response to those motions, but I actually want an opportunity for us to go through those motions in great detail. I think if we just take them all in one meeting and we're just going to look at them, note them and not really do anything with them, I'd like to put them under each thin meeting and actually progress them throughout the year um, rather, than, rather than kind of take them in one. So if you if you put a motion to the committee and you're wondering what's happening to them, we will look at them throughout the year and we will look at them in, in greater detail and probably invite the uh, uh, person that made the motion uh, to come along and make the case as well so we can kind of actually do something more with them. 